Hello and welcome back to the RDA. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you are doing well. You asked for it. It's the Van der Beek video and you're going to get it in today's video. We'll be discussing my thoughts around the situation with Donny Van der Beek and my thoughts around the situation with Paul Pogba, obviously. And also the recent criticism with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and the media in comparison to Frank Lampard. I think it's so inter interesting. So do hit that like button and do subscribe if you are new and let's get into it. Now look, let me start off by saying that firstly, I do agree with everyone saying that Donny van der Beek should start, but I do not agree with the quote-unquote outrage on social media and all the ex-pundits coming out saying things like Donny van der Beek made a mistake by coming to Manchester United. First of all, I thought we as football fans on social media with our immature and premature and emotional opinions were the ones who were supposed to judge a player's career decision based on five games. But no, apparently these guys who have mics and sit in professional media um, setups for Sky Sports, for BT, think that Donny van der Beek has made a ca catastrophic mistake. Think that Pogba will never get injured, Bruno will never get injured, McTominay and Fred are just too good, and Matic will never get injured. So therefore, Donny van der Beek will never play. He'll only end up playing like nine or eight games, apparently. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But I could slam ex-pundits all day. Why do I think Donny van der Beek isn't starting well, I think it's very simple. When you get battered 6-1 against Spurs, you get battered 3-1 against Crystal Palace, and then you nearly lose to Brighton on two occasions. It's very important that new players are eased into the team when the mentality is right and the positivity is right. You may not personally agree with it, but a lot of managers do it. Jose did it with Hendrik Mkhitaryan. He took ages to start Mkhitaryan because he wanted to develop some sort of consistency in the team, figure out where Mkhitaryan fits into the team and where he can get the best out of Mkhitaryan for the playing style that he wants. And it's high-end Premier League football. People think, you know, it's like football manager or FIFA. You just go to the guy's stats and look at how many positions he can play. And then you're like, oh, okay, I don't have a cam. I'm just going to put him in cam. Or I don't have a DM. I'm just going to put him in DM because his rating's higher. It doesn't work like that in real life. He's transitioning to a completely different league with a completely different level of physicality. Yes, we've seen him come on in moments and do well. But that might not be enough to justify him starting. Leroy Sané wasn't a regular starter at Manchester City. And no, it wasn't because of Manchester City's squad depth. When Leroy Sané signed for Manchester United, they actually didn't have as much squad depth as they do right now. Manchester City, pardon me. Leroy Sané didn't start for a very, very long time. But no, let's all talk about Donny van der Beek because there's nothing else to talk about in the news, right? Of football. Okay, cool. And just before I move on from that, I mean, the thing that Patrice Evra said about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer playing his best technical footballers instead of rewarding players, that is the most bullshit I've ever heard. Did we not play our best technical footballers against Spurs and lose 6-1? Did we not play our best technical footballers against Crystal Palace and lose 3-1? Did we not play our best technical footballers against Sevilla and lose in, in the Europa League? Did we not play half a squad of our best technical footballers against Chelsea and get slapped 3-1 at, at the end to Wembley? Fred... McTominay and Bruno Fernandes, that midfield trio has played nine games. They've drawn three, they've won six since January. Why are people ignoring that stat? So moving on then, the slating of Paul Pogba, you know, I, I think the, 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 the mainstream media is absolutely disgusting. You know, if you wonder why some people start YouTube channels, and I'm not talking about myself, I'm not losing myself up, I'm talking about people who actually genuinely have a CV in media and a presence in media and could realistically get a job at places like Sky Sports and BT. They go off and start their own because the nice thing about YouTube, the nice thing about social media, um, even though as football fans we get criticized for our opinions because of our short termism and our lack of rationality and being objective, quote unquote, the reason why YouTube is such a nice place is because it's, there's freedom of speech and opinions are actually genuine. But when you look at the mainstream media, it seems like they're trying to control a narrative. It seems like every story and headline they put out has some sort of motive, some sort of spin. It's supposed to play on some sort of psychological string. You know, it's supposed to make you feel a certain way before the facts have even been checked. The news around Paul Pogba is absolutely disgusting. I mean, The Sun reported that he's quote-unquote quitting the French national team. They didn't even reach out to him or his agent to confirm that news. But it's news. It's out there. And not everybody follows Paul Pogba because some people think he's a virus, right? So they're going to use their cognitive bias. They're going to use their confirmation bias by reading that article and go, yeah, yes, I told you, I told you he's a virus. He's not even loyal to his national team, this, this, that, and the other. You know people are going to use this to go against Paul Pogba. It's pretty obvious. 
And so the damage has been done by Son. And they do this all the time. They do it with Raheem Sterling. I'm pretty sure they'll be doing it with Marcus Rashford soon, as soon as he gets caught drinking out in public. Because, you know, he's a saint helping kids uh, solve child poverty. You know, them wait there, fam. So apparently he can't do no wrong. I think Marcus Rashford is next. I think he's going to get targeted by the media. But, you know, poor Pogba, I think it's absolutely disgusting. First of all, his religious beliefs should have nothing to do with what the president said. What the president of France said is what the president of France said. Like Paul Pogba is a footballer. And the fact that his name has been dragged into politics now is just, it's amazing. It's a By the way, if you are one of those people that thinks Paul Pogba is a virus because of the story that you read yesterday, actually, he came out and said that it is fake news. You know, he did slam the media. Bruno Fernandes came out a few weeks ago saying there was no fallout at Spurs. And, you know, we should stop using his manager or his name to run his club to the dirt. So really... I'm liking what's going on at Manchester United with players coming out and actually denouncing stories. And I wish players did this more. I mean, to be fair to Pogba, if he had a penny for every time he had to come out and denounce a story in the media for it being false, he'd be rich. He'd be richer than he already is. He'd probably have double the income. So, you know, I, I expect it. But moving on, Frank Lampard, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, which one is the big, bigger PE teacher? And does Mikel Arteta enter that conversation? I think if you think that Mikel Arteta... Lampard or Ole Gunnar Solskjaer PE teachers, you're exposing yourself as an idiot. One won the FA Cup. PE teachers don't win FA Cups in their first season after taking over from a manager that the club absolutely hated and caused a massive divide in the dressing room. So to me, you're exposing yourself as an idiot. Two, PE teachers don't finish fourth in one of the hardest leagues in the world after having a transfer ban in their first season. So again, you're exposing yourself as an idiot. Third, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, he came third. That was better than Jose Mourinho's first season, and he inherited the scraps of Jose Mourinho's squad. To call him a PE teacher is... It's as idiotic as saying your current PE teacher if you're in school, or your last PE teacher if you're out of school and you're a bit of a boomer like me. Your last PE teacher, think of whoever it was. You're basically saying that guy could take over Manchester United and come third. Anyways, I think the criticism of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer for playing the way he did against, Man uh, against Chelsea because he was at home is weird because people say they can understand why Lampard did it. Chelsea have been on a bad run of form. Oh, okay. Did we not just lose 6-1 to Spurs? Did we not just lose 3-1 to Crystal Palace? And, I mean, if you want to go before that, did we not just get knocked out of the Europa League? Double standards. Do Manchester United not have issues with their defence? And also, why does Lampard have defensive issues if they had one of the biggest transfer windows in history? If Ole Gunnar Solskjaer actually got his, his priority targets, which is not just Jadon Sancho, by the way. Jack Grealish was one of his targets. Oppo Meccano was a centre-back uh, as one of his targets. Maybe it wasn't Oppo Meccano specifically, but we do know that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wanted a centre-back, specifically a left-footed centre-back. I mean, he was even talking to Nathan Ake, so there was a lot of buzz around that. Um, Manchester United obviously did not back Ole Gunnar Solskjaer well. And there's question marks around whether Van der Beek is actually an Ole Gunnar Solskjaer signing as well, which is interesting. I'm not even going to go there. I'm not even going to go there. But Telles wasn't. We wanted Regulon, and Telles, I think, was a third option, which is absolutely appalling. No disrespect to Alex Telles. He's a fantastic player, but the point is the manager didn't want him first. He wasn't an out-and-out -out priority. Grealish, we didn't get Sancho, that deal fell apart, and he was our priority signing. He was going to be the statement signing of the summer. We didn't get him. Who did we get instead? Long-haired Madonna, and we gave him the number seven jersey as well. And we pretended like it was a good opportunity, even though we waited till the last 48 hours of the transfer window, when we had eight months to negotiate the deal. Appalling. There was no club that we needed to go to. No one. We just needed to pay his agent and him. But apparently we waited till the last 48 hours of the window, because it was a great opportunity. Bullshit. It's been your boy Triple M with another video. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do not be shy and do leave a like on the video, as I said. And please do not forget to subscribe if you are new to the channel. We are making daily football content, not just focused on Manchester United, but other teams as well. But uh, obviously, we're a primarily Manchester United fan channel. So yeah, uh, enjoy the rest of your day slash evening whenever you're watching this. And please stay safe and uh, sending you positive vibes. Peace out. It's been your boy Triple M with another video. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do not be shy and do leave a like on the video, as I said. And please do not forget to subscribe if you are new to the channel. We are making daily football content, not just focused on Manchester United, but other teams as well. But uh, obviously, we're a primarily Manchester United fan channel. So yeah, uh, enjoy the rest of your day slash evening whenever you're watching this. And please stay safe and uh, sending you positive vibes. Peace out.